Her name is Lori Cabot, and she is the official witch of Salem, Massachusetts. This self-proclaimed title may sound ridiculous, but I honestly can't think of another person who deserves it more. Before Lori Cabot, there were no witch shops in Salem, no witch statues, no witch covens, no haunted houses, no ghost tours, no fortune tellers or psychic fairs, and Halloween was just like every other Halloween in America. Cabot was the first person who realized that witchcraft could be marketed in Salem. And since the early 1970s, she paved the way for the witch kitsch tourist industry that defines Salem today. Her story begins not in Salem, but in Wewoka, Oklahoma, where she was born on March 6, 1933, while en route to California with her mother and adopted father. Her real name is Mercedes Elizabeth Kersey, and she grew up in Anaheim up until the early 1950s, when her parents sold their property to the developers of Disneyland. Cabot and her mother returned to Boston, where she began showing signs of psychic capabilities in high school. Hoping to learn more about these powers, she visited the Boston Public Library. There she met librarian Felicity Baumgartner, a witch from Kent, England. Although I found no evidence of this person's existence, according to Cabot's legend, Felicity taught her the basics of witchcraft. Cabot's penchant for the taboo carried into the 1950s, when, rather than attend college, she worked as a lead showgirl and costume designer at the Latin Quarter, a famous burlesque club in Times Square. She then joined a belly dancing troupe at Boston's Club Zara, which further reveals her affinity for attention, outlandish costumes, and spectacle. While living in the North End in the 1960s, Cabot began practicing witchcraft more seriously. The religion was spreading in popularity with the feminist, environmental, and New Age movements, and Cabot considered opening a witch shop on Cambridge Street until her family attorney advised against it. But by 1969, she was divorced twice, had two children to care for, and was broke. Together with a girlfriend, they pooled their money and moved into 18 Chestnut Street in Salem, Mass. By spring of 1971, she had opened the first witchcraft shop in America, appropriately called a witch shop, at 100 Derby Street, but it soon closed. Undeterred, she opened Crow Haven Corner in 1975, and this became one of Salem's first major tourist attractions, perhaps due to its central location on Essex Street, as well as Cabot's promotional campaigns. Dressed in black robes, heavy eyeliner, and pentacle necklaces, Cabot taught witchcraft workshops in local colleges, initiated the annual Witches' Ball, attended Red Sox games for good luck, and provided live daily astrological predictions via phone to a Boston radio station. Since 1973, Cabot had made numerous attempts to be christened the official Witch of Salem, but they were repeatedly denied by the city council. Mayor Sam Zoll believed, quote, the historical recognition of the city would be internationally demeaned by allowing a commercial capitalization by one individual. Still, Cabot pressed on, this time appealing directly to Massachusetts Governor Michael Dukakis. To everyone's disbelief, it worked. In April of 1977, Governor Dukakis bestowed Lori Cabot with the Patriots Award, stating, quote, I proclaim Lori Cabot the official Witch of Salem for her work with children with special needs. And there it was, in writing from the governor himself. Cabot quickly capitalized on the citation, advertising herself forever since as the official witch of Salem. And on a side note, this citation would actually come back to haunt Dukakis, whose 1988 presidential campaign was attacked by Christian fundamentalists. Cabot's growing fame caught the attention of National Geographic, which published in April of 1979 a now famous picture of Cabot's coven. Note the strange blue light that was captured on the bottom of the film. Kodak claims this was nothing more than static electricity. Cabot, of course, claims it was Jupiter's blue energy. Flanking Cabot are her two daughters, Penny and Jody, both of whom learned the craft from an early age. On Jody's 18th birthday, her mother would actually give her control of Crow Haven. Cabot's new witch shop opened in Pickering Wharf in 1982. That same year, the Salem Chamber of Commerce, with 
Cabot as a board member, organized a four-day festival called Haunted Happenings to bring more tourists into the city. This marked a major turning point in Salem's history, for it was the first time the city realized how profitable the witch trials tragedy could be, something Cabot had been aware of for years. Things in Salem would never be the same, for the event opened a bottomless black well of witch and spooky-related enterprises. Haunted Happenings also marked the beginning of Cabot's golden years, a time when she faced little competition from other witches, her coven grew in members, and her fame increased to the national level. Here she is on The Oprah Winfrey Show, protesting the Hollywood movie The Witches of Eastwick. She found the portrayal of witches so offensive that she founded the Witches League for Public Awareness, a media watchdog group that made national headlines protesting the film. The group was dedicated to correcting misinformation about witches, and even went so far as to change the definition of witch in Webster's Dictionary. When Mayor Anthony Salvo made a joke about a wizard, Cabot felt obligated to run against him in the 1987 mayoral election. She would, however, ultimately drop out of the race to concentrate on her book, The Power of the Witch, published in 1989. Her fame peaked in the mid-1990s, when she made appearances on Joan Rivers and Unsolved Mysteries. At this point, her luck began to turn for the worse. In July of 1997, Cabot foreclosed on her Salem condo. To recover, she planned to start a witch corporation with entrepreneur Janet Andrews. When Andrews pulled out of the business venture, Cabot snapped, yelling, quote, you can take the corporation and stick it up your ass. I'm Lori Cabot and I'm worth one million. Cabot then left voodoo dolls outside Andrews front door and even threatened to shoot her in the head with a gun. Fearing for her life, Andrews got a restraining order against Cabot, which she didn't listen to. During the trials, many of Cabot's own supporters testified that Cabot had overemphasized commercialism and her own personality above the spiritual core of witchcraft. More controversy followed in 2004 when Cabot placed a curse on two Salem police officers carrying out a court order to return Cabot's grandson to the custody of his father. When Cabot refused to open the door for police armed with a warrant, they entered on their own. Quote, Look me in the eyes, Cabot said. You are cursed for life. Today, Cabot is 84 years old and sports a spiral tattoo on her left cheek. She closed her shop in Pickering Wharf in 2012 and relies mainly on online sales and psychic sessions to get by. Her presence has diminished in Salem, overshadowed by the many witches and high priests that copy the formula she first invented. As her power fades, I can't help but remember a moment in my boyhood when I saw Lori Cabot walking towards me on a damp October afternoon on Federal Street. As she neared, a black cat crossed our path, and without skipping a beat, she picked it up and began whispering into its ear as she walked by me. I'm not sure how it was for other children, but her presence in town made me believe that magic may exist after all. It wasn't until years later, when I was older, and a bit more cynical, when I slowly began to realize that maybe she was using a tragedy to promote her religion and business. But regardless, whether you love her or hate her, Lori Cabot has definitely written herself into this city's bizarro history, and has certainly earned the title, Official Witch of Salem. Mm -hmm.